Hey, how's everyone doing? Uh, coincidentally, one year ago today, I put this video out. And in it, I walked you through how to connect an external hard drive from another computer, another system, to a uh, container in Proxmox. Well, everything that we did in that was mainly a uh, command line. And since then, it's uh, been made a little bit easier. So I thought we'd go ahead We'd revisit it and go through the new way of connecting it. And while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and connect a, a external hard drive to a virtual machine that's running Linux and a virtual machine that's running Windows. Next on Low Res DIY. Okay, now... In the old video, the way we would do this is we would start by going into the node and then going into the shell of the node, editing the FSTAF file, doing a mount A to create the mount to put it in effect, and then edit the configure file for the container that uh, we wanted the share to be uh, connected to. Everything worked fine. I mean, there were. Uh, couple folks had problems with the uh, mount being persistent to where meaning that they would shut their Proxmox machine off, they would start it back up and the share wouldn't be there for the container. So they'd have to go into the shell of the node again and they would have to do a mount dash A. If you're having that problem and you don't want to do any of this and change it, I did come up with a workaround and I put it in the description of the last video. So go check that out and that'll make your... Uh, make your connection persistent each time you shut it off it'll reconnect itself but in this case we don't even have to go into the shell of the node so let's go ahead and let's create a container 100 fine let's just name it container and give it a password confirm the password and then right here right here where it says unprivileged container and it's checked we want to uncheck that so we uncheck it, we hit next, and let's just burn through this. We'll pick Ubuntu 21.10. We will give it eight gigabytes of hard drive space. Let's give it four cores to just speed everything up. 512 on the memory is fine. DHCP, we'll let it figure out what our IP address is. DNS, we'll just use what's there and confirm everything so you checked it you're good you're happy with everything here we're not going to start it after creation we're just going to click finish and we're going to let the container create all right it's done creating the container and it is right here 100 container so we're going to click on that and you see it's not started up or anything the first thing we want to do is we want to actually go right down here where it says options so that's where we want to go so let's click on options down here at the bottom features we're going to click on it and then we are going to edit those features click edit and we want to pick the smb smb which is samba cfs same thing we're going to click that now these other options here nesting Nesting is if you want to utilize Docker in container. You can actually do that now by checking that. Click nesting and then you can use Docker containers within a container, which kind of seems weird to me. And, uh, and I don't know, in my mind, it seems like it's prone to having issues, but apparently it works. I'm not a Docker guy, so I've never really tried it out. Uh, if you have an NFS share, you click that one. Of course, your Samba share, which which I'm doing, we'll use that. And then Fuse and Create a Device node. I don't have a clue. Hopefully you do. I don't. So we're going to just click that one option. We're going to click OK. Go back up to our console. We're going to click on Start and Start the Container. Log in with the username root and the password that we gave it when we created the container and start out. And the first thing we want to do, we want to edit our FSTAB file. So we're going to nano slash ETC slash FSTAB, click enter, scroll down one, and we're going to add this line right here. So what do we have going on here? All right, well, the first part right here, that's the IP address 
of the system that has the share that you want to connect to. The next line is the actual share that you want to connect to. And then this line is the mount point on your container where you want that share to show up at. Followed up by the username of the share and the password for the share. Now you're not going to see that. I'm going to have that all buzzed out. But whatever your password is, that's where you would put it. And this gobbledygook back here at the end, I forget what it's for, but it's it just assists with making the connection. So the one thing I need to do is we're going to go ahead and take this Plex Media out because I don't have that directory in there right now. And we're going to follow this up by hitting holding down control, hitting X. Yes, we want to save it. Enter. Okay, so the FSTAB file is now saved. But if we go into our mount directory where we told the share to connect to and we do an LS, there's nothing there. All right, so let's CD back out. And what we want to do is mount dash A. And then if we CD back into our, our uh, mount directory and we do an LS, Bam, there's everything from that Plex share is now in uh, our mount directory. So everything's working good. We're happy with that. If you're just using one share like that, it's it's simple. It's it's easy. That's We're done. But user John came up with this problem right here. He had two hard drives that were separate shares and he wanted to share them to one container so what did he do he did the same thing i thought you would do he went into his fstab file and he just copied the next share underneath the original share which in this case it's uh backups that we're sharing so then you control x to save it yes we want to save it Go back out to the root and we do our mount dash a again just to reconnect everything go into our mount directory and we do an ls and what the hell it's gone our plex media directory is gone now you can see plex media right there but that is actually part of the share that that i'm sharing again so what happened to the original share well what i think happened was you did the mount dash a it took the upper level share of plex media and it connected it but then it went to the next line and it did the share for the backups directory and it overrode the plex share so john and i went back and forth a little bit and this is the, the little workaround that, that we came up with. So what we want to do is we want to go back into, uh, or actually we want to stay in our mount directory and we want to make a directory with MKDIR and we'll name one Plex Media. And oh, it's showing it's created there already uh, because it's part of the share it, it won't go anywhere but then we want to make another directory called backups which actually it's there also for some reason so we're going to make that directory also and go back into our fstab file and we are going to add behind mount the new directory of plex media and behind mount we are going to add the new directory of backups obviously get these correct you don't want to have your uh plex media share going into your backups directory under mount and vice versa so we go ahead and do that let's do a control x yes we want to save it and now let's restart the container all right let's log back in and let's cd into the mount directory let's do an ls now all of a sudden all we have is those two directories that we created but if we CD into, let's go into backups. And we do an LS. Oh, what did I, I spelled it wrong, I betcha. Yep, you betcha. I forgot a slash. Click enter, let's do an LS. Bam, there's all the directories that were under 
the backup share. So let's go ahead and let's CD into Plex Media. Hit enter and we LS into that and bam, there's all the information that is being shared to us from the Plex Media share. So there's a little bit of a workaround if you need to add multiple shares to a container that's how you do it. You just need to make multiple directories, reference them all to different directories, and then you'll have access to them. So easy peasy, right? We're good with that. Let's go ahead and shut this guy down because I don't need him for anything. And let's go into a Linux virtual machine. I already created one because I didn't want to bore you with the whole installation process of it and everything. I'm already logged in. Let's do a clear here. So how i'm going to go ahead and bring, make this larger too so how are we going to do the share in uh in our virtual machine well guess what it's the exact same thing as what we just did <laughs> can't uh can't copy and paste in uh, a vm shell so this might be very painful f stab is what we want so f stab has a lot more information in it in the virtual machine we do the exact same thing we did before ip address the share that we want to connect i told you it might be painful it's already painful and then the directory we want to uh share that direct that uh share to share that share to that's something cifs that's the type of share we're sharing username equals low res and then oh very painful comma space password equals my password again i'm going to fuzz this out so you won't be able to see it comma i o chart set comma space no perm space zero space zero and you know no perm hey come on i'm almost 50 i'm sh i'm assuming a lot of you guys are about the same age back in the late 80s 90s you know you got that perm you know you did everybody got that tight curl back in the back to go with that mullet you had going on but all right anyway i digress so let's get back to this i'm gonna expand that again and Let's take one of these T's out. Do a control X to save it. Yes, we want to save it and enter. Uh oh. Yeah, I F that up right there. So we're going to have to control X out of it. And no, we don't want to save it. What I forgot to do was instead of just nano it, we need to sudo it because it thinks it's so machine. Give it a password. Now go back in and retype everything in because I enjoy typing so much. So cue the fast forward. All right, it's a good thing I uh, screwed up the sudo because I didn't type everything in correctly, but. All right, so we, now we have it typed in correctly. I'm not sure. Let's go to council and see if that gives us the full screen of what's going on. And okay, there it is. Pseudo mount dash A, enter. And then let's CD into our mount directory, do an LS and bam, everything's there. So pretty much the exact same thing. Not pretty much. It is the exact same thing as doing it for the can container. If you want to add multiple hard drives, multiple shares, exact same thing as we did with the container. So the last thing I want to show you real quick. And just so you know, a VM same thing as bare metal so if you're trying to share to a bare metal machine it's the exact same commands everything works exactly the same so let's go into our windows uh virtual machine real quick and and we open up window or file explorer go down to this pc and then up here click on computer and then we're going to map a hard drive 
it's going to designate a drive letter you can change that to whatever you want it, the example right here it's showing you slash slash the server which that's the IP address and then slash share and that's the actual share so let's go ahead and we'll do a slash slash 192.168.1.33 forward slash plex media and then we're going to connect under different credentials. I don't know what your creden credentials are. Actually, I think I made this VM the same. So we'll unclick that. We'll click finish. And bam, it jumped into it that quick. There's everything right there. If you want to add another one, you do the exact same thing. This computer, computer, map a hard drive. So it's pretty easy. Again, it's a virtual machine. It thinks it's bare metal. So if you want to do this on your desktop and connect it to a free NAS server or something else, it's the exact same thing. All right. So hopefully this helped you out in some way. I don't know which way, but some way, hopefully it helped you out. And if you're interested in things like this, uh, do me a favor and reach down and karate chop that like button and roundhouse kick the subscribe button. And we'll catch you later.